Hello everyone. Now this video I'm posting on the request of one of my students, Nikunj Mehta, who wanted me to do a post on cryptocurrency and its legal status in India. So in this video, I'm going to discuss briefly about cryptocurrency. Like I mentioned, the keyword is briefly. I'm not going to go into extreme details of it. I'll briefly discuss about cryptocurrency and we'll also discuss about what is the current legal situation of cryptocurrency in India. Can you trade it? Can you buy and sell cryptocurrencies? Can you hold cryptocurrencies in India and so on? So without any further delay, let's begin. So first, let us begin by understanding what is cryptocurrency? Well, it's a digital asset. A cryptocurrency, it's a digital asset, just like you hold money in your Paytm wallet. So in this case, you hold this cryptocurrency, which is a virtual currency in your digital wallet. Now, when I say virtual currency, what do I mean by it? See, in the real life, when you hold money in your bank account, understand you're not holding the money physically. So even in case of cryptocurrency, you can't hold the currency physically. But then in case of real money or currency, if you want, you can walk into the bank and withdraw the money and you will be given cash by the bank. But in case of cryptocurrency, you will never be physically be able to hold that currency because it does not have a physical existence. There are no notes and coins for cryptocurrencies. It is and will always be held only in a virtual format. So a cryptocurrency is essentially an alternative for physical currency and it is designed to work as a medium of exchange. It uses now cryptocurrency uses cryptography to control its creation and management. I'll come to this in a moment. And the most important differentiating factor between cryptocurrency and the real currency like your pound, dollar, etc. is that cryptocurrency does not rely on a central authority for its creation and management. Now we know that the real currencies, that is your pound, dollar, rupee, whatever it may be, they're all controlled and created by the central bank of the country. But in case of cryptocurrency, there is no central monitoring authority which is going to control its creation and movement. That is perhaps one of the most distinguishing feature of a cryptocurrency. Now, how do transactions take place? Well, to send or receive a cryptocurrency, like I mentioned, you, you need to use a digital wallet. A wallet app is used and your cryptocurrencies are stored in that wallet in a digital form. And these cryptocurrencies can be converted into fiat currency. Fiat currency meaning a pound, the traditional currency as we know it, pound, dollar, rupee, Canadian dollars and so on. Now these are called as fiat currencies and they can be exchanged into fiat currency at the prevailing exchange rate. That means these cryptocurrencies are traded against the fiat currencies and therefore they have an exchange rate which keeps changing from minute to minute just like the other currencies do in the currency market. Now, if we come to types of cryptocurrencies, see, just like you have different currencies like pound, dollar, rupee, Singapore dollars, Canadian dollars, and so on. Similarly, you have different types of cryptocurrencies. For example, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, Cardano, Stellar, Litecoin, and so on. In the last count, there are about 1600 types of cryptocurrencies. Now, because Bitcoins have become more famous, people tend to use the term cryptocurrency and Bitcoins interchangeably. They often refer to cryptocurrencies as Bitcoins. This is the same thing like we do in India when we say that we want to photocopy something, we say we want to Xerox it. Or perhaps in US when someone wants to courier something, they say that they will FedEx it. So same way, People have started using Bitcoins to refer as cryptocurrencies, but please understand that Bitcoin is one of the type of cryptocurrency, right? So there are many different types of cryptocurrencies and each of them would have a particular price against the fiat currencies. And like I mentioned, Bitcoins and Ethereum are possibly the two most popular and actively traded. The rest are also traded, but in terms of volumes, they are nowhere comparable to Bitcoin and Ethereum. So these are the types of cryptocurrencies. And to give you an idea, the rates as of 5th October on the day when I'm recording this video, one Bitcoin is worth 10,000 
670 US dollars or roughly about 7,80,980 Indian rupees. That's the value of one Bitcoin. Well, one of the things that would be coming into minds of people who are not aware of this concept is, where do we get the cryptocurrency from? See, there are essentially three sources from where you can get cryptocurrency. One is what we call as mining. I will explain this concept to you. Of course, like I mentioned, I will explain this concept in a very preliminary and simple manner. And then the second source of cryptocurrency is that you buy the cryptocurrency in exchange of your fiat currency. So essentially, if you are an Indian resident, you can give 7,80,000 odd rupees and purchase one Bitcoin. Or third is you receive Bitcoins from someone else in lieu of services which you render to them. So for example, let us say I sell a video game to Mr. X and Mr. X, instead of paying me in dollars, decides to pay me in cryptocurrency. So I have now got cryptocurrency in my digital wallet. So essentially there are three sources, mining, buying and services. Now let us look at mining. What exactly do we mean by mining? See, a uh, virtual currency carries itself a risk of what we call as double spending. Let me explain this. Let's say you have $100 in your pocket and you want to buy, let us say, a webcam. So you walk into the shop, you give your $100 to the shopkeeper and he hands you over the webcam. Now there is no way that you can spend this $100 again with someone else. Because once you have handed over your $100, to the shopkeeper, you are no longer in position of the $100. So there is no way that you can double spend this $100. But in case of virtual currency, what could happen is someone could replicate this token and use it to make payments to two different people, right? Now, this is the same thing like, for example, let us say you have two $10 notes with you. One of them is real, the other one is fake. Now, if you go to the shopkeeper, the shopkeeper will look at the notes very closely and he will discard one, which is the fake, saying that this is not acceptable and he will accept only the one which is the genuine note. Same way, in case of cryptocurrency, when a transaction is reported, there are people who verify the authenticity of the transaction. Now, these people who verify the authenticity of these transactions are very similar to auditors. And in the cryptocurrency world, these people are called as miners. So essentially, these people work to authenticate a transaction by solving complex computational puzzles. And the first one to solve this puzzle gets a Bitcoin as his reward. So essentially, this person by solving the puzzle, has extracted or mined a Bitcoin. So the miner uses his computer prowess to crack difficult puzzles and as a reward for solving the puzzle, the miner gets the Bitcoins. Now, in case of a Bitcoin, the miner has to verify one megabyte worth of Bitcoin transaction, which is known as a block. Once he mines a block, he is then eligible to receive Bitcoins for his efforts. The question then arises is, how many Bitcoins would he receive if he mines a block? Well, this number of Bitcoins which is received for mining a block has been changing over a period of years. To give you an idea, in 2009, mining one block could get you 50 Bitcoins. And in 2012, mining one block could get you only 25 Bitcoins. So if you see this, every four years, the number of Bitcoins that a person gets for mining a block, it's been reducing by halves. So in 2016, mining one block could get you only 12.5 Bitcoins. And it is forecasted that very shortly, mining one block would only get you about 6.25 Bitcoins. Reward effort ratio for mining a Bitcoin has been constantly been reducing. Now, as a result, what will happen is once this reaches a particular level, no more Bitcoins can be extracted. So the number or the quantum of Bitcoins in circulation would be fixed. Now, here lies another stark difference with the real world currencies. Now, in the real world currencies like your dollar and pound, the quantum of money in circulation is fixed at a particular moment of time. But there is no assurance that this won't increase because we know that governments do tend to print money in case of need. 
But in case of Bitcoin especially, the quantum of Bitcoins in circulation is expected to be fixed over a period of time. Now the second source from where you can buy Bitcoins are from exchanges. Now there are so many of these exchanges like when you say exchanges in a broad sense you can you can possibly correlate it with say a Nasdaq or a national stock exchange. Now in those exchanges what is traded are shares and commodities. In these exchanges what are traded are cryptocurrencies. There are many of these exchanges. So if you want to buy one Bitcoin or even if you want to buy a fraction of a Bitcoin. Now there's another advantage of trading in Bitcoins. You need not buy one Bitcoin like you need to buy one share. Right? You need not buy one Bitcoin. You can buy a fraction of a Bitcoin. So you can possibly even buy 0 0.0125 Bitcoins. So if you want to buy a Bitcoin, you will have to give fiat currency and in an exchange you will get a specified number of Bitcoins depending on what the exchange rate is on that particular day. Now this is where the collision between the cryptocurrency and the real world currency comes in. And this is where banks are at loggerheads with these cryptocurrencies. I'll come to this in a moment. And once you purchase the Bitcoin from any of these exchanges, that Bitcoins will now reside in your digital wallet. Now there are a couple of things that you could do with that. Now let us say you want to buy a new gaming station. So you can buy a gaming station and instead of paying it in fiat currency in say dollar or pounds, you can make the payments through the bitcoins which are now there in your digital wallet. That's one thing you could do with it. Or the second thing that you could do with it possibly is if you buy bitcoins today and the rates of bitcoins, let's say appreciates over a period of next one month, you could sell off those bitcoins and make a profit. So you could trade on that just like you can trade in any other currencies. Now, of course, there is a third thing that you could do. Let us say you've got one Bitcoin in your digital wallet and you want to buy a PlayStation. But unfortunately, what is happening is the seller of the PlayStation is not willing to accept payments in cryptocurrencies. He says, I want the payment in dollars in the fiat currency. So what you can do is you can exchange your cryptocurrency for the fiat currency and make the payment in the fiat currency. So that's the three things that you could do. But essentially, the point I'm trying to make here is, is that if you want to buy cryptocurrencies, there are so many exchanges which are in operations from where you can buy these cryptocurrencies. So we have discussed two sources from where you could procure cryptocurrencies. That is mining and second is buying from exchanges. Now, before we discuss the third source, let us have a look at some of the exchanges which are operating in India. You have BayuCoin, Vazirx, CoinDCX, BitBNS, Colorax, CoinSwitch, Geotis and Zeppay. Now, these are only some of them which I have listed. So, you can register yourself on any of these exchanges, complete the KYC requirements and once your KYC requirements are fulfilled, you can open a digital wallet with them and start buying and selling cryptocurrencies. I mean, the process is very similar to your opening a stock trading account with any of these online broking houses. You just log on to their site, fill up the KYC, submit the KYC documents. And once that is done, they open a trading account and they open a DMAT account and you start trading, right? Same way. Here also you do the here instead of opening a DMAT account, you'll be opening a digital wallet account where you will be storing your cryptocurrencies. So these are some of the crypto exchanges in India. Of course, post the April 2018 RBI circular, which put a ban on cryptocurrencies in India. Well, not exactly a ban, but we'll discuss that in a moment. A whole lot of these exchanges went into crisis mode. Because once RBI said that you could not trade in cryptocurrencies, now what were these currencies, what were these exchanges supposed to do in any case? So a lot of them uh, ran into some kind of either regulatory or financial troubles. Anyway, that's besides the point. Now coming to the point, the third method of procuring cryptocurrencies is 
for paying and receiving for services. So let us say you are a graphic designer and you have designed some kind of a logo for a client of yours. And instead of receiving the payment in a fiat currency like say dollar or pound, you could prefer to receive your payment in cryptocurrencies. And this cryptocurrency which you receive, you can in turn use it for paying for services which you have availed or you can have it converted into fiat currencies like dollars, pounds and deposit it in your regular bank account, right? So these are the three sources for procuring cryptocurrencies, mining, buying it on exchanges and third is paying or receiving for services. Now coming to the legal status of cryptocurrencies in India. See, in April 2018, RBI issued a circular which prohibited all regulated entities, that is those entities which were regulated by RBI from dealing in cryptocurrencies and also from rendering any kind of services to anyone engaged in buying or selling cryptocurrencies. Now this abruptly halted all activities of buying and selling cryptocurrencies in India because now people were not very clear on what the legal status was because RBI only prohibited the regulated entities to buy and sell cryptocurrencies. So that means it was only telling banks or any other entity which was regulated by it not to deal in cryptocurrencies. But what about an individual who is not regulated by RBI? Therefore, I could trade in it, which means technically speaking, buying and selling cryptocurrency was not illegal. But then with the banking channels not participating in this, there was a problem. Now, what is the problem? Presume that I have two bitcoins in my account and I want to convert it into fiat currency. Now, here is the problem because no bank was permitted by RBI to give me fiat currency in exchange of these virtual currencies. So those who had virtual currencies were literally stuck with it. So the matter was appealed against and in March 2020, that is about six months back, Supreme Court gave a verdict which said that RBI's circular of April 2018 was unconstitutional. Now this immediately meant that the exchanges could bounce back. And this is exactly what happened. A lot of exchanges started functioning again. But then the problem was by March 2020, the pandemic had hit the world hard. So any chances of witnessing a high volume spurt in cryptocurrency was literally squashed by the pandemic. But be that as it may, the status as of today is Supreme Court has clearly said that RBI cannot prohibit any banks or financial institutions from dealing in cryptocurrencies. But the problem now is banks are saying that they have not received a specific circular from RBI stating that they can now do it. So a lot of banks are still not clear as to whether they want to participate in this whole process or not. They're giving all kinds of excuses saying that RBI has not told us specifically that we can do it. Now, when checked with RBI, see, there was a RCI query filed by Mr. B.V. Harish, who is the co-founder of Unocoin. And his question was specifically, has the RBI prohibited banks from providing bank accounts to crypto exchanges and crypto traders? And the reply to the RTI query given by RBI was no, RBI has not prohibited banks from providing banking transactions to crypto exchanges or crypto traders. That's all they said, right? But they have nowhere said that they have permitted it. But of course, looking at the Supreme Court judgment, we know that Supreme, even the Supreme Court has now recognized the legality of it. Of course, there are news floating around that RBI is going to file to the Supreme Court against this decision. See now, what is the problem perceived by RBI? One is they feel that because this is not controlled or regulated by anyone, there is a huge possibility of the cryptocurrency being used for black money and dark money. 
now if we consider this proposition th see this argument by rbi is while it may have its valid reasons but this argument is not tenable because if a particular method can be misused then you don't ban it you put in place checks and controls which can prevent the misuse of the mechanism but instead of doing that you try to ban the whole product and especially you are trying to ban a product which is slowly but surely finding global acceptance there would be problems associated with it just like in case of any other product but the way forward should be that you try to put checks and balances in place you frame laws which can prevent misuse of it you should be doing all that instead of trying to ban it but to sum it up the status in india as of right now is rbi has clearly mentioned that it is not illegal to be trading in cryptocurrency or to be holding cryptocurrencies the supreme court has clearly mentioned in its judgment saying that rbi circular of april 2018 is unconstitutional but like i mentioned banks are still hesitant to provide banking services as far as crypto exchanges and crypto traders are concerned this is the current status of cryptocurrency in india i hope that solves a lot of your queries that's all for today stay fit stay healthy and ciao